there's this perception, right, that certain people at the executive level who are in search always command the most attention. They get the most offers. They get the most recruiters contacting them. They mo- How true is it, is question A, and part B is, what does in fact separate the people that seem to have that power, that gravitas, as they say, from the others, the ones who more employers seem to notice what separates them? Is it their value proposition or is it more to it than that? Um, it's, it's interesting that this question came up because that was a mystery to me in the beginning. Um, because as I've recruited through recessions and I've recruited through a few now, I'll, I'll, I'll save you from having to do the math, but (laughs) we always still had searches that we were working on. And it sounded to me like every time you know, the market had been pulled out, like, let's say under the, you know, the financial industry, there were still people that our clients had, were paying us to go out and recruit. And I was thinking to myself, what's the difference between those people and the, and the other, you know, 99% of the people that are calling me that I don't have jobs for, I can't help them. And the more I talked to them, the more I realized that that 1% and it seemed like 1%, even though I didn't really do any data behind it, but you know, I just kind of looked at my, my database and who I was recruiting and they were the same people everybody else was after. Those were the people who were, they never put their head in the sand, right? They never said, uh, oh, I'm happy, I'm comfortable in my job. I don't really need to do anything to get me to that next level. They were always doing something, whether it be a new certification, they were always trying to figure out how to market themselves better. They were trying to get themselves out there like they'd always wanna be the ones speaking at the conferences. And that's when it hit me. I was like, well, number one, they got their eye on the prize all the time. They never get comfortable. But number two, They're making sure that their reputation extends beyond their immediate people who just know them, because that's a real dangerous place to be as an executive, because what happens is you have a reputation with the people you work with, obviously. You're the person they come to with all the problems, or you've, you've got maybe some PE firms that have had successful exits with you. And the higher you go and the longer you're in your career, the shape of the pyramid again, the more likely that those people are either in the job or retired. And I was talking to somebody a month or so ago who said he reached out to somebody at a PE firm that he had a successful exit with. And the guy said, oh yeah, you're you're great. I'm gonna send you a ton of names. The guy sent him 13 names. And out of the 13 names, 12 of them were retired. Oh, wow. So there ends up being this shelf life of people who have had a firsthand experience with you. And so the people that are really the sought after are the ones that have taken that extra step to make sure they're, they are known. And when I say reputation, here's what I really mean that, that makes them a success. Known for their value. Not known because they worked at Deutsche Bank. Not known because they worked at you know Apple or something like that, or not known because they did the largest IPO in China, or you know, but actually known for the problem they solved, and that becomes their reputation. 